John. Hi, uh, I'm Jan Johnson, and uh, I've worked for about the last 15 years on how to cushion and pad the plant box uh, and make it safer. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, there are several things that are involved, and um, if we're going to make a plant box, it's uh, cushioned and yet long lasting. Uh, that's what this is about. So um, here we go. Here's, uh, here's the, the, the first page that kind of outlines the uh, things we're trying to do, which is uh, cushion the box, but also cushion the surrounding area around the box uh, so that it's cushioned like it is with a box collar, and yet you don't have the problems of a box collar. Uh, to do this in the best way, we have to have a flexible cushion sidewalls, the sides of the box, and the bottom of the box. And you have to have the right thickness of uh, metal. You can't do it with plastic. Um, it just wears out way too fast. Uh, but you can do it with metal, and uh, we explain how to do all that. Uh, corrosion resistant is really important. Uh, closed cell uh, cushioning materials underneath and surrounding the box is also very important. Uh, we want to lower the front edge between 3 quarters and 1 inch. Uh, below the surface of the runway. This gives us a, the ability to attach it better to the subsurface of the runway. Uh, we want to have rubberized cushioning materials made out of track surfacing around the perimeter of the box and covering the upper edges of the box. In my opinion, durability is very important. Uh, we're jumping on boxes here in, at my place in my backyard where it's my liability and uh, my ability to put anything in the ground I want as far as the box goes. Uh, we got seven years in this box and we worked on it for about seven years before that, figuring out what the material should be. Um, the ability of your box area to matriculate the moisture on the outdoor uh, situation especially is very important. Uh, that's why we're using closed cell stuff and that's why we designed the, the uh, system the way it is. And um, having depths of materials and the depths of materials underneath and around the plant box can be much deeper and much more, um, much more uh, safer Cushion, cushioning standpoint uh, than any box collar. So we want to keep the cost down. Uh, we want to make it simple. I really think that, I think if you follow instructions, probably any, any teacher, any group of kids and a parent uh, can probably do this. Uh, it, it, it's really important too, in my opinion, that you should be able to uh, move this box from area to area. Um, uh, rather than just having it stuck in the ground and stuck in concrete, we have to chop it out with a, with a concrete saw and a, and a jackhammer. Um, uh, I own the patent, uh, but I, I'm really, I run a, have all the manufacturers of, uh, of this and the rule makers uh, be involved in it. I'm really not looking to kill the manufacturers as far as the licensing agreement goes. Uh, uh, my real goal is to just make it safer. We've done many things in these 25 years to make it make pole vaulting safer. Uh, making the pits bigger, they were too small, uh, especially when the, when the sport went from uh, non-bending poles, aluminum or, or uh, bamboo, to fiberglass. Well, when that happened, the pits got too small uh, and, and foam rubber pits were coming in. And so, um, and so we, we worked on that part of it. Uh, we worked, I worked on a part of it where we increased the, the angle of the back of the box, uh, the old 90 degree angle is just two and it pulls up really bad. Um, uh, I worked on the, uh, I worked on the one where we padded the standards, all those, uh, all those are really important things that we did and all those have made the sport more safe. Um, so that's, that's, that's really what I'm trying to do here, big guy. Um, Here's a, a page right out of the National High School Federation rule book, Rule 6-5. Uh, and, and this is what you see out there 99.9% .9 of the time. 
this top this top uh, thing here. Uh, it's concrete with uh, plate steel. You really can't make the box any harder. It's also showing the uh, edge of the box, uh, even with the top surface of the runway, which is totally the wrong thing to do. Um, um, so that, that's, that's what we see almost everywhere. So looking down at the next picture right now, uh, this picture tells three great stories. First of all, look at the bump that I've outlined on the front edge where it bumps up. We see this everywhere. Um, this is terrible. Uh, it just it just makes the sport way more dangerous uh, when you have this type of setup. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the box here where the pole strikes, you can see how it's darker. And we see uh, how the pole is striking there. Uh, in, in my design, we, uh, we make sure that that area is, uh, is uh, buttressed with concrete so that it, the back of the box doesn't warp out and uh, so that it feels basically the same as boxes feel in today's world. But most important of all, you can see how the pole is grinding. The poles are grinding on the top edge of the box where that black, black area is. And you can also see how uh, on this particular box and like almost every other box, it's got a very hard metal edge all around the perimeter. You couldn't make it any more dangerous than this. This shows uh, a plant box uh, with a commonly used box collar, the top picture, uh, but it also shows how there's a little front edge lip on the uh, front edge of the box where the front edge of the box meets the runway. Uh, so dangerous. It's so easy for a pole tip to get caught on the air or to hop up and jump up off of there. Uh, really not, not so good. Uh, it also shows simply that if you have concrete in a plate steel box, how still the bottom part of the box and the sidewalls are still incredibly hard. The only area that needs to be hard is where the pole strikes at the back edge of the box. So that's what we're trying to do. Looking at the bottom picture, we just kind of outline uh, here are some of the things I've just spoken about. Um, the pole strike area, um, the frictional areas where the poles grind on the poles. And you can see it's not just limited to the top of the back. The, the poles for right-handed vaulters bend to the left, and that's why that whole area is black there on the top edge. Uh, uh, but you can also see how there's grinding on the side portion of it and on the other portion of it. There's not that many left-handed vaulters around. So um, the right-hand side where the pole bends to if you're left-handed uh, is showing a little bit on the top edge. But every single time you take a pole vault jump or a swing up or a drill, the pole is grinding or rotating on that top edge, and that's really bad. Box really shows what our potential force impacts are when tested from 12 and a half feet. Um, the, the, we've tested it uh, with, with impact testing devices in the ASTM specification, which is 12 and a half feet. Uh, it's so high that it will not measure, it will not measure what the actual amount is. So we are guesstimating that it's around 10,000. The impact tester that we've used will only measure to about 8,500. Uh, we're way, way, way beyond that. Um, um, the, the, the impact attenuation on the inside edges of the pit uh, typically tests around 4,500 hit. And uh, the, uh, the hit on the runway surface behind and surrounding the box and on most runway surfaces is around 85 hit. Um, 3,000 hit, if you have a head injury with 3,000 hit, it'll kill you. It, 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 it's 100% chance it'll kill you. Uh, we want to take the impact testing down to uh, to uh, about three or 400 hit on those areas that we can. So the, the lower picture shows how a pole bowler has to turn upside down 
uh, and you straight over these edges and this really incredibly hard box. Here's a, here's a landing position. Uh, you see this occasionally in pole bowling. This is typically a landing position uh, uh, if the pole tip catches on the front edge of the box uh, or if the bottom of the pole breaks uh, right there where it's been ground up on. Uh, typically the boulder uh, landing in this position is falling from maybe six or eight feet approximately. Um, you can land from higher on it also, but that's typically uh, how it is. The bottom picture shows the damage that's going on in poles. And this is no, this is no special set of poles here, ladies and gentlemen. These are just poles uh, on, on my particular uh, setup. I have four or 500 poles here. Uh, every single pole has got damage on the bottom of the pole, like you see here in this, uh, in this picture. Uh, people have been taping up the bottom of their poles forever. And uh, that protects it for a little bit. And then usually the guy wears, forgets about that and the tape wears out and then you're getting, you're getting damage on the bottom anywhere. If, anyway, if you break the bottom of the pole on the top edge of the box, uh, typically the, 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 the pole tip right above that will catch on the front edge of the pit. And uh, typically you have a very short landing uh, on your back in a box like that. So then the document I've written for ASTM, uh, this just shows you uh, in a general way how an elevated runway, the top docket is how an elevated runway would look and perform. And I'm just defining the areas, uh, how deep the box is, where the padding goes, uh, what, 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 what we call the bend cavity, um, and uh, how, uh, how we want to rubberize the surfacing around the area of the box and have cushioning underneath it. So that's what, that, that's what figure D is. Figure E is, uh, is uh, just some very, very, very slight changes uh, that we've made to the dimensions of the box. Uh, the current rule is 120 degrees on the sidewalls. And you can see here on the top edge here, I'm calling 122. What that does is that reduces your uh, that reduces your uh, grinding on, this, on the uh, edges of the top of the sidewalls. Uh, er everything else is the same, except, except we're going to change the angle of the back of the box three or four degrees, because when you lower the front edge, uh, you lose three or four degrees. So, so to, keep the, to keep the box in a good spot, we want to do it that way. Uh, this also shows how you're... Um, how you're going to fix the box at the front edge of the of the runway or the edge of the runway uh, by having a, by having a, a, a front edge that, that is downturned and goes beyond the outside edges of the box so you have a place to screw in with uh, screws or bolts or whatever you're going to use. Figure C. Figure C is a very important figure. It just tells you all kinds of really important things. Uh, what we think the angle of the back should be. Uh, you can see here we have concrete uh, behind the back edge of the box where the pole strikes, uh, but we're cushioning on top of that concrete and we're cushioning everything else underneath and around the box. Uh, you can also see how we're attaching um, with bolts or screws or whatever to the uh, to the front edge, to the edge of the runway. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, those wings have to come out a little bit beyond the front edge of the box. Uh, figure B is a box that we jump on at Paso Robles High School. A um, lot of good things about that. We're saying that the, the, the cushioned area should uh, be marked the way, the way in figure B it's marked with that uh, white, with that, uh, white paint. Uh, you should have a star or something marking the exact center of the box. And uh, you can see how the rubber track surfacing uh, goes below the surface of the runway and onto the uh, top edges of the flexible box. Uh, 
very important. Your eye is an install. Just a couple pictures of an install. Uh, once again, showing uh, at the front edge uh, how it's below the surface of the runway. Uh, showing how that front edge on the outside edges, you can screw that into the uh, subsurface of the runway. Uh, I, rubber mulch, rubber mulch is awesome uh, as a plant box underlayment material and cushioning material. It allows the matriculation of moisture. Um, uh, it's cheap. You can buy it for about three bucks a bag at almost any hardware store. Uh, it's available everywhere. Typically, you'll need four or five bags of uh, rubber mulch. In uh, this particular box, you can see uh, in the bend cavity area, we've uh, outwardly curved uh, the top edge of the box. That reduces, that reduces grinding on the top edge. And we've also uh, outwardly curved uh, the uh, top edges of the sidewalls here where they meet the back edge of the box. Um, just reduces friction on the bottom of the pole. Uh, next next uh, thing down, figure F. Uh, it's just a markup of, of uh, how you would uh, do the how you would do the attachments and the concrete anchor and how you could cushion straight on top of it and then put rubber surfacing on top of that. It just tells you the dimensions we're recommending and uh, how you could do all that. Great picture. Probably the most important picture in the whole doc. Graphics at the top show you in a back landing on the box uh, what you're in, what our anticipated uh, head injury criteria numbers would be with the concrete box with the uh, with those metal edges like we show. It's ten or eleven thousand hick. Uh, the runway is about eighty five hundred hick. Uh, like I said earlier, 3,000 hit head injury criteria uh, is a certain fatality. And then the, 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 the picture on the left shows you what we're anticipating uh, that around the top edges, and we tested this, uh, it's around 800 hit. We've, we, we've improved it from a, from a 10,000 ish to 800. Uh, that's a massive improvement. Um, so that's what that's all about. Uh, the next graph down is uh, from ASTM, the F1292. The, uh, uh, and it just shows you in head injury criteria, or what we call HIC, um, what fatal, critical, moderate, and minor injuries are in terms of uh, impact attenuation. So, uh, basically, if you're looking at that black line uh, all the way in the right-hand side, uh, 3,000 hick is 100% chance of fatal injury. Uh, 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 looking at the very bottom of the line, around um, 1,000, maybe 1,500 hick, uh, you're really not having a, you're really not having much of a problem at all. Um, so. Uh, very, very important information to look at. Uh, the next chart down is uh, a research paper I've written from my pole vault camps. Uh, this is the kids that attended my pole vaulting camps between 2010 and 2020. I, I love to go out and ask the kids questions about their jumping and what they believe and if they get hurt and what goes on. I've done this for many, many, many years. Uh, so these are just two questions that I asked them uh, uh, those particular 10 years. Uh, how many times, the first one is, how many times have you landed in or around a plant box? Now we tested uh, what, 2,500 kids over those 10 years, we asked them this question. Uh, and, 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 and so in or around the plant box, you can land and, and hurt your ankle, your lower back, you can have a concussion on your head, you can hurt your tailbone, uh, you can hurt your shoulder bad in the box, uh, you can have a heel in the box, or you can have a butt bruise. Um, so, that's what I did here. I just went through and asked, okay, you landed in a box. How did you land in the box? And, uh, and how many times did you land in the box? So 
Um, that's really what we're looking at there. And uh, the bottom figure tells you as a percentage how many people landed that way in the box or the next to the bottom figure, I'm sorry. So landing on their feet in the box, 22% of kids who have pole ball, let's say they've landed on their feet and hurt their ankle in the box. That's the first, that's the very first one. Uh, tailbone in the box, about one and a half percent. Shoulder in the box, well, to hurt your shoulder in the box, that means you gotta land all the way in the box. That's 2%. Uh, 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 heel in the box, all the way over in the right side. Um, um 66 percent have landed and bruised their heel or hurt their heel bad in the box and then all the way to the right side uh landed on their butt in the box two percent so those are just some some uh numbers i was interested in knowing uh you know not just what happened at pole vault camp but how how it went for kids and these are kids in wisconsin indiana kentucky new england California, just a group of people all over the country. Very important chart right here. It really shows you the values. If you look at the two columns all the way in the right, the ones that say 12 and a half actual GMAX, 12 and a half HIC. Let's just talk about HIC and follow the HIC column down, which is the second column over. Uh, uh, head form only, 8,196 HIC. The helmets that are being sold, we tested those, 6,830 hit. Wow, that helmet doesn't give you very much, uh, does it? And, and, no, and really, nobody likes to pull ball with the helmet on. Uh, box collars, uh, line number three, the original two and a half safety max collar, which, which I helped design, 2,253 hit. It's getting better, huh? Yellow uh, original safety max, 749 hit, 48 hit, I'm sorry. Uh, the old, old, old style collar didn't do very much, did it? 7,590 hit. Orange safety max, there's a 97 or a 947 hit. Uh, orange safety max, uh, on, that was kind of concrete. On dirt, it's a little bit softer because there's a little bit of difference, obviously, uh, uh, and so on. Um, if we if we move down to uh, where it says perimeter materials, plush moist grass is around 800 hit. Dry dirt is 4,278 hit. It's a lot harder than plush moist grass, isn't it? Uh, synthetic field turf, 1,777. Six inches of wood chips, 812. Dropping down a couple, uh, a, a couple of more. Uh, look at six inches pea gravel, 589 hit. Six inches of pea gravel. Wow, one of the best ones out there. Three inches of wood chips wet and padded and packed, uh, 1,600 hit. So those are all things we tested, uh, oh, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 years ago. And then I started working with materials that we could actually install. I want to know exactly what they were. So that's what that, that next set of lines are. Uh, there's con number 20, line number 20, 10,000 hit uh, from concrete and plate steel. And you can work down that whole list uh, Here's soft pan box number 22, five inches of Skydex, which is a type of padding material. I'm not really recommending it. It was really good. The problem with Skydex is, is uh, it has cups on it and the thing, the cups fill up with water uh, and, it, and it, makes it, it makes it too hard. But uh, if you just work down that list a little bit, you'll see, uh, you'll see, uh, let's see here, which one is it? Here's uh, number 32, two and a half inches of pea gravel, two and a half inches of, uh, of uh, packed rubber mulch, three quarter inches of uh, rubber track surfacing, 485 hit. That's a long way from 10,000, right? 
The very next one down, line 33, 515 hit. Uh, tw number 20, Galvey with pea gravel and uh, cracked rubber mulch and EP uh, one inch of EPS foam. Uh, having different materials with different thicknesses is really important in terms of uh, making the box cushioned and long lasting and feeling like a regular plant box. Yeah, that's a very, that's a very important chart right there, ladies and gentlemen. But lines 31, 32, 33, that's what we're recommending. That testing looks like, uh, um, we tested on this particular day, uh, six or eight different samples. Uh, and I describe them all right here. Um, um, very, 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 very good way to uh, test uh, what the shock attenuation is uh, on the on the bottom of the box. So uh, on this particular day, and it was kind of a wet and kind of a cold day. Uh, every single place we tested was between eighty five and ninety percent uh, improvement uh, over what's currently out there. So anyhow, that's just how it's done. The you jump and the higher you grip the pole and the more you bend the pole, uh, the more you have what you see in this particular picture, which is a pole leaning very hard on the side edge of the box. That's why we want to widen the box a little bit and we want to curve the edges outward a little bit uh, to reduce that type of friction. Anyhow, that's how the poles get damaged. Um, here's one of the boxes we've installed. Uh, you can see how on the front edge on the ledger, it goes beyond the outside walls. That lets you screw into the subsurface so you don't have the problem of the front edge popping up. The problem we have in the sport is that water, especially in freeze-thaw environments, gets underneath the box, it freezes, and the way the box is designed right now, it pops the box up a little bit, especially on the front edge. And uh, that makes it, that makes it uh, dangerous. Uh, here you can see how um, the area where the pole strikes, we call it the rotational edge and the strike plate area. Uh, you gotta have, uh, you gotta have uh, those anchor attachments there. So when you put concrete around it, it holds its position. And uh, you want to have it. You want to have it strong uh, and thicker right there than the rest of the box. The rest of the box can be, uh, you know, galvanized metal, uh, much more flexible. Um, and we 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 describe that on how to do that also. This is a box uh, with our current box collar in it, and you can see how it's totally out of position. And uh, you can also see how. It really doesn't cushion one of the most critical areas, which is the top edge of the uh, end plate. Uh, in the design we want, we want to get rid of that metal about the top inch and a half, two inches of that metal on the top of the end plate right there and uh, cushion it. Um, and so anyway, this, this just shows you how the box can be totally out of position and you're constantly, uh, adjusting it to keep it in position. I like this box hook because the front edge is a little bit is a little bit below the surface of the runway. That's a good part. You can see there's a little bit of line on the top edge there on the top of the end plate where the poles have been grinding on it, but that's everywhere you go. Here's figure J, the black and white one at the top. Uh, it explains about closed cell foam. Uh, we call it EPS foam. You can buy it right at Home Depot. Uh, it's foam that's basically uh, closed cell. Uh, they use it uh, underneath concrete slabs and around uh, and around the sidewalls of uh, buildings uh, as an insulator. It's really durable. It's really good. It's the perfect type of foam uh, to use uh, on these flexible sidewalls and uh, bottom band. Uh, generally, we will put uh, between a half of an inch and one inch of EPS foam uh, underneath the uh, underneath the pull slide. We just glue it right to it and uh, right on the sidewalls. And then it's also underneath the uh, rubber track surfacing. Uh, 
The bottom picture is a, a box I just installed a little while ago at Westmont College. Uh, the yellow area is cushion around the perimeter. Uh, we, use, uh, we use some forms uh, to uh, do the install um, so that, uh, so that the uh, cushioning can be above the top edge, the top metal edges. And you can see how we've uh, also uh, used at the very front edge of the box, uh, that same um, track surfacing material uh, to, um, to uh, make a little bridge from the edge of the runway down onto the subsurface of, uh, onto the top surface of the box. Here's that same box uh, before we put the rubber track surfacing on top. Um, this shows you what it looks like with rubber with uh, rubber mulch around the perimeter and EPS foam. Okay. And uh, here it is now uh, with the forms out of it and all that. And you can see uh, how the rubber is above the top edges of the box. Uh, it's not painted very good. That white area along the top edge on, on the box uh, really should be painted. Uh, but but uh, we've got, I think at the front one inch and at the back about an inch and three quarters of rubber on top of the box. On this particular box, the only place where it's hard is where you see uh, it's painted, spray painted yellow there uh, where the pull strike is. Um, and the uh, pole rotational area. That's the only hard area. The rest of the box is cushioned. It's way softer. This is what we've uh, put in about 30 or 40 of them around the country and what we're jumping on here in my backyard. Really what, what I've tried to do here is just make it safer, uh, especially here where I coach pole balling at my place every day. I want the safest facility I can have. And uh, that's why I've worked on this. I have several plant boxes and areas we jump in back and it, it, it just was really important that it could be done. And I knew it could be done. I just had to figure out how it needed to be done. And, and that's really what we've done here.